I start to get out in front of Emma, and she stops. And I feel this. And the moment I turn around, she's going to say yes, and she's going to feed me. Right? I thought that was kind of interesting, so we're going to go back and do it again. Okay, so Emma and I are for a walk. I start going out to the end. I start pull, pulling, and I turn around. She says yes, and she feeds. Now, that's really interesting. Okay, we're going to do this again. Okay, we're going to go for a walk. I get out to the end of the leash. Hey, wait a minute, last time I... Yes, yes I have fed. Now the dog starts to learn, wait a minute. If there is a value of 10% fully on the leash, but when I don't pull, there's a value of 20 or 30 or maybe 100%, now what happens? Now the dog learns it's more successful, go for what? To be right here instead of going out in front of her, right? Okay, and then once she has the information to the dog, when the dog knows to walk right next to her like this, then she can feed me when she walks. So she can constantly, she can constantly reinforce me. However, stop for a minute. You don't want to do what she just did. Do you see what hand she fed the dog out of? What hand did she feed the dog out of? Right. Any idea why you don't want to do it out of the right hand? If the dog's on your left. You got it. What's going to happen is, I'm going to start doing this every time she stops, right? What she wants to do is she wants to feed out the side that the dog is on. So she's going to feed out the left. She also, when she feeds me, she wants to feed me right here, not in front of her. So act like you're feeding the dog. Okay, okay. so your hand goes right here and feeds the dog. Okay, so now she's going to go for a walk again. Okay, and as she's walking, she may feed. Good, and she's going to keep walking, and she's going to feed. So now I'm learning there's no success in getting out in front of her. Because the moment I get out in front of her, she's just going to stop. But there's more success in walking next to her. Does that make sense? All right, take your dog back. <laughs> Let's see if we can do this with Charlie. Okay, so she's going to drive Charlie out. When you do this, don't do this on a prong collar. Typically, do this like on a flat collar. Something that allows the dog um, to kind of pull on the leash and, and learn on their own. A prong collar, yes, the dog learns sometimes quicker. Hey, pulling on this is a little versatile. However, I want the dog to do this necessary without the you have the chair on. Alright, so let's see what Charlie can do. I'm gonna be in front of Charlie to kind of encourage Charlie a little bit. Yes, okay. Diesel. Okay. Here, give Diesel a little bit more leash. Diesel. 
But this dog is so quick that Lana has to be really on top of the marker because dog's brain is like a little Ferrari. And so it goes from one, one behavior right to another. And so in order to capture that, we have to have our timing. Okay, uh, we'll do this with one more dog. Can we do this? Can we try this with your best dog? All right. Can't believe I was already a joke and a song, but didn't ask. So you were late to walk. Yeah, that's why I said. Oh, should I give it to him? Um, and yeah, put on the collar. That's it. Left. 
But if you want your dog to heal on the right, then you can heal on the right. One little tidbit of information. Um, some people teach the dog to walk on the left, and then some people teach the dog to heal on the right, or vice versa. So the dog knows when I'm on the left-hand side, I don't have to be attentive. I don't have to halt every time you stop. When the dog's on the other side, the dog learns I'm attentive, and every time you come to a halt, I need to stop. So if, you, if you're going to work on both, that might be a little tidbit of information you might want to implement there. Okay? So Emma's going to put her dog in a sit. Emma's got a dog in a sit. Okay? Emma's dog is a little bit too far forward. Can you bring the dog back a little bit? There you go. Watch how Emma's going to feed. So she sits, sits her elbow out. Okay? And she brings her hand right here. And she feeds. Okay? That's your first lesson. How we feed our dog beside us. Palm towards the dog, elbow out. Now watch what happens when she brings her food to her belly button. Bring her food to her belly button. What happens? Dog kind of wraps around, right? Now watch when she starts walking. Just walk. Okay? Stop. Oh, bloody hell, you didn't do it. Most of the time, your dog will wrap in front of you, right? Yeah, let's try again. Go back again. Okay, so the first lesson is how we feed our dog in the heel position. The next lesson is we're going we're gonna to load that marker. So what she's going to do, she has food, and she says heel and she feeds. Go walk, please. Okay. So healing starts without, in my opinion, without movement. So you're not going to put any movement. Okay, so our dog's there. She says heel and feed. Good, and then she does it again. Heel and feet. Okay? Heel and feet. So you can do this a bunch of times. Then, once the dog understands heel means reward is coming, then Emma's going to take one step. She's going to say heel and take one step. Okay? And the dog automatically sits. Heel and one step. Good. So what we're looking for if the dog understands what we're doing is this. Take your hand away, please. Okay, I love the dog's head. So I'm going to distract Charlie. She's going to say heel. If he looks back up at her, then he's understanding. Take your hand a little further away. Higher, higher. Get away. Come here. Dog is talented. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Good. Charlie. Let me lose the way you say heel. Good. So the moment she says heel, what the dog will do? Look at it. Knew what the dog was. Okay? Okay, and then she'll take one step. He'll take one step. Awesome. All right, so here's what I want you guys to try to do. You're going to stand up, you're going to put your, you're going to ask your dog, or lure your dog to sit, or ask your dog to sit. Feed the dog from the sit, work on your hand position, and then start loading that heel. Heel, feed, heel, feed. Do not take any steps. I want you to do like three or four sets of like five or six pieces of food, and then maybe you can work on it one step at a time. But let's really load that heel marker. Okay? Remember, elbow out, palm towards the dog. Say heel and feet. So set yourself on the side of the Okay, watch this. Watch this. Stick your elbow out. Get your hand out. There you go. Show me some food. Ask him to sit. Sit. So, there you go. Thank you, Emma. I totally forgot. Like this? Sit. Bring your hand out more. Out more. Elbow out. Bring your hand out now. Like that, like, now twist your forearm a little bit. Okay, forget the dog coming. Put your hand back there. Ignore the dog coming. Roll your forearm. Yeah, a little bit more. Show him the back of your hand. Back of your hand. Back. No, that's it. Like that's how I want you. Not too much. Pull it back a little bit. There, that's where you want it. Right okay. Yeah, try it. Yeah. All right. Sit. So. Sit. Here, guys, watch this for a minute. Watch. Watch what this young lady does. Okay, do it here. Take the leash and put it behind your backside. Keep watching. Now watch. Put a little pressure on your leash and you get the side. Turn to the side, put a little pressure on it. So her dog wants to keep coming in front of her. The reason being, up to now, everything good has come from the front of us, right? So now the dog's automatically kicking around. So she's going to put a little pressure on the leash. Put a little pressure on the leash and turn to the side. You turn, pressure on the leash, get beside him more. Get beside him. Now, move to your left. Bring your hand out above the fence. Uh, there. So now she's able to get inside her dog. Okay? So if you if you find that your dog keeps out kicking in front of you, put the leash behind your backside, keep it kind of low. And go there. You're, you're going way too fast. What? Don't work on any steps. No steps. Do you? Okay, if you want to do that, that's fine. But he's already kind of learned some bad habits. Look, look at his ankle. 
If you're happy with that yeah. amount, yeah. Yeah. I think you can do it. I think you can do it. Here we go. Send it to the side. Elbow out. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, yeah, 
Work on it, then we come around and help each each person. Yeah, very 
So now don't do such a big swoop behind you. So uh, bring it back beside you. Like, there you go. And she just does that. And then once once the dog is offering the behavior in that, then she does a little bit less of that. And pretty soon the dog says, oh, on your verbal marker, because you say heal or whatever you finish, whatever your marker is going to be, then the dog says, oh, I don't need the hand to move. I offer it by myself. Okay? Remember, this is a crash course in healing. True healing takes a lot, a lot of work. If you guys want to expand your knowledge, you'll be able to go now and do more research, watch more videos, and say, oh man, and I can expand on that. But then again, most of you guys are just going to not want your dogs to pull. If I meet 100 people in a month, probably 99% of them just don't want to walk a dog without them being yanked down the street. Very few people really want to put the time in to actually teach them a dog to heal. Because healing takes so much work. Okay? All right, so is there anything that I covered? In the last four weeks that maybe you want to ask about, we need to go over again. 
Um, questions on? Yes. Can I see the very first thing one more time? The very first what? The very first thing we did today. Can we see that one more time? Which is the the. The, the, dog the, the very first thing we worked on. Oh yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Teach the dog not to pull on the heel yeah, or the walk on the leash. The the not the walk on the leash um, part. Sure. What what part of it you don't understand? Just the whole. Set me through it one more time. Sure. Here, Emma. Can, Emma, can you use your game? Yeah. We toss it out the other Or in the other get on there. Okay, so I'm in this dog. I'm used to every time we go for a walk, I'm 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 pulling it, right? So I'm used to that. So now what she's gonna do, she's gonna go for a walk. I start to get out in front of her and pull, she stops. The moment I turn around, boom, she pays me. Okay, then we do that again. There we go for a walk again. I get out in front of her, start pulling, stop, she says yes, turn around and feed, right? And then pretty soon the dog's learning, hey, there's no value in going in front of mom, and there's more value in being here. When the dog is walking next to it, food is always on the side that the dog is on, and you're rewarded. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. And you don't pull the dog back, you let the dog. You let the dog figure this out himself. Because if you're pulling the back, it's kind of like this. If your uh, kids bring home homework, and you do it for them, what happens after a while? The kid doesn't want to start putting the effort into it, right? Because the kid does left, left, less effort. So one of the big questions I get asked a lot of times is, am I always going to have to reinforce? Am I always going to have to have, carry food with me? Okay? No and yes. Me personally, I'm never ready to not reinforce behaviors. I'm never ready to go cold turkey. However, I do build a belief system to my dog that there is going to be a re uh, reinforcement. It may be five minutes later, 10 minutes later, or 20 minutes later, or 30 seconds later. But you will not always have to use food. This is the one big um, misunderstanding using positive reinforcement. People all say, well, I don't want to have to always use food. Well, look at this way, and I know we covered this in the very first class. If you knew you would sit down in a slot machine and you'd never win, how, often, how, how long would you sit there? Not but the chance of winning keeps you there, right? Keeps you pulling the handle, keeps you pushing those buttons, keeps you feeding it. That's kind of what, the, what we're doing with the dog. And get at the first, we're always paying the dog, we're always reinforcing. The dog is learning these behaviors, understanding that every time they, they have a trust pattern with us, every time uh, they, they, they do the marker, we're gonna reinforce them. Then we start varying the pay schedule. So if we reward them all the time for six months, then after six months, we start varying that. So we'll do two or three rewards, and then we'll do one without a reward. Then five or six with rewards, and then four or five, and you know, like, like four or five times without rewards, and then 20 times with reward. So the dog says, man, I don't want to take a chance of missing this reinforcement, so I'm going to perform all the time. I mean, with this belief system that I'm going to get rewarded. But what happens to a lot of people that meet my class is a dog that's really good for these four weeks, and then maybe a week or two after that, they reinforce, but then they go cold turkey, right? And after a while, and for a first week or two after going cold turkey, the dog is still under the impression or the belief system that they're getting reinforced. But pretty soon, that starts eroding their markers, and pretty soon the dog's like, ah, there's more value in not. There's more value in chasing squirrels in the yard than coming back to mom and dad. So you really need to ask yourself, when your dog starts like not performing or not following through the markers, how often do I reinforce? I, one of the things Emma and I talked about today, Emma said, man, my dog's really pulling a lot when I go on hikes. And I asked her, are you rewarding on hikes? Well, no, she never carries food on hikes, right? So what the dog is learning is there's no re reinforcement of going on hikes. I'm gonna reinforce myself. So you're always wanting to reinforce randomly after your dog firmly understands behaviors. So in dog training, we call them anchored. As soon as your behaviors are really anchored, then you can start varying the base schedule. Okay? All right, any questions, guys? Anything at all? All right, well, you guys did really good. So one of the questions I get often, too, just kind of popping in my head, is do I have follow-up classes? Do I have more advanced classes? To be honest with you, I don't. Here's a couple of the reasons why. Um, I jam so much into this class, I feel that if you apply everything you've learned in this class, you probably should have a pretty well-trained dog after a year or two. And I do say a year or two. Success is not gonna come 
overnight. It's going to take a lot of work. If there is something that, man, you just you have, you're having difficulty with, or I maybe can't cover, or doesn't fall under the 10 things that we learned, call me up. We can do a private one-on-one -on -one session, and we'll try to address those privately, and I'd love to help you with those, okay? So I really appreciate you guys being here. Emma's got some graduation slips. If it would be a, can you hand this off, please, Emma? I need dog names first. Oh, she's going to write the dog's name on it. Okay, um, um, what's your dog's name? We'll just go Chewy. Chewy? C-H-E-W-Y. You guys are really special. And those time I don't fill them out. We just kind of give them out and then people fill them out. So <laughs> Emma's uh, pretty adamant on that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And what's your guys' name? Sasha. 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 S-A-S-H-A. -S -S -A. <laughs> So how long do these videos uh, stay up on your site? On your page? No, usually forever. Okay. Oh, okay. That's long. That's long. <laughs> well, until Facebook oh. crashes. <laughs> which I doubt it's going to happen anytime soon. So, yeah. what's yeah. your guys' dog name? Yeah. Nike. Nike? Not Adidas. <laughs> Adidas is the other dog. Yeah. So once Emma's done having a graduation slip, if I could get a photo of each one of you guys and your dog in your graduation slip in front of my banner here, that would be awesome. Maverick, Maverick, M-A-V-E-R-I-K. Maverick, 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 Maverick,